You may, you may proceed. Okay. So this is the presentation of expect deviation. Next one by Marie, Victoria, and Jared. So this shot shows the net revenue of our company from year five to year 15. And uh, as you can see, we've been growing since year five. And um, also it, in year 14, there was kind of a degree, decrease in revenue, but it was fine because um, it was kind of hard for our company. So I think we did fine with this one. Next one. And for the stock price, I believe that we did amazing. We, we exceeded the, the investor expectation. We were the best in the industry in year nine and uh, year 12 to year 15. And um, we see that year 10 was also a decrease kind of, but we were still high, higher than the, the investor expectation. And uh, year 14, as I said earlier, was hard on every company, but we were still high compared to the investor expectation. Next one. The EPS. So as we can see here, we constantly growing from $1.93 in year five to $16.25 in year 15. And we're best in, best in the industry in year nine with eight. $34 and also based in the industry from year 12 to year 14. So that's basically it. And um, the return on equity, as we're the first company, like the best ranking, we're also best in the industry in year eight and uh, the year nine in the year 12 to year 14 as well, we exceeded the, the, invest, the investor expectation. So as for the credit rating, we achieved and exceeded the investor expectation even during struggling years, like the first years in year five to year six. And the least credit rating that we were able to achieve was a minus, so we're still good at this level. The image rating, we also achieve expectation from year six to year 12, but we were not able to achieve expectation from year 13 to year 15. As we can see, we decrease from year 13. Okay, our company's strategic vision is to become a leading producer and distributor of cameras and drone in order to satisfy every customer needs in technology. We also aspire to be an admired and respected company around the world. For the cost strategy, we use the, the best cost strategy we strive to, to achieve a great product with great features that can attract our customer. And we also strive to, to get a lower price. So that a lower price compared to competitors to attract customer as well. Okay, here are our performance targets. We expect in, in year 16, an EPS of $16.5, an ROE of 102%, a credit rating of A, A plus, and the image rating of 80. For that one, 
it may seem like it's gonna be hard for us to get because we've been struggling for the last years, but I think we can reach it. And uh, for the year 17, we expect an EPS of $17, an ROE of 105%, a credit rating of A+, and an image rating of 80 as well. Okay, now we're going to talk about the, our competitive strategy in action cameras in uh, action cameras. Throughout the years, we strove to, to achieve a best cost provider strategy. We, okay, I think I missed it up, so I'm going to come again. Um, we, we strive to get a great product with great features that is going to attract customer. We also strive to get a lower price compared to competitors. And uh, for the international strategy, we think local and act local. Uh, regarding the shifting exchange rate, we go for an adaptive strategy. So for this one, when the, the rate, the exchange rate in one country is high, um, when it's high, hmm. I think we go for a price that is higher because we get more revenue when we do that. And when the currency go a decrease, we decrease the price too. And uh, regarding the cost, when it's high, we export goods to foreign country to gain competitiveness when the currency of the country in, in which the goods are manufactured is weak. So I guess that's what we do here. And uh, we also strive to minimize the impact of fluctuating rates. For this one, we try to lock the deal with, with uh, partners so that when the the rate goes high, we still pay the same price. Uh, regarding the stock repurchase, this one is the good strategy because it helped boost our EPS, our stock price, and our ROE, our return on equity. And we also pay dividend to shareholder because it has a positive effect on the company's stock price. And it also it is also a good evidence to shareholder that the company is doing good. Um, regarding our cameras, we invest in the raw materials. Uh, as we know that when our product is performant, the customer is attracted to buy the product. So in return, we get more revenue. And we also make sure to balance our pricing. We don't want to, to, to get like a product that is too expensive and customer cannot buy. So we try to balance these two aspects. And as for the marketing per, based on region, we work on the purchasing power of customer. As uh, we know that in North America, the, the customer have a good purchasing price. So we tend to get the price higher so that we get, we get more revenue. And at the same time, we, we, I think we grant them a higher warranty period, we emphasize more on the advertising 
and we we strive to get great deals with retailers so that when we have great great discount we can um, give customer a lower price uh, aspect aviation consider its workforce as partners so we 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 want to get them good wages and um, benefits. So, but as we do that, we also make sure that it doesn't affect the company overall profitability. And we also of we also make sure to invest in the, in the workforce training so that they can give us uh, the best productivity. And for the special contracts, we work with, with retailers so that we can get good discount and we, we strive also to, to get the loyalty so that we can keep working on them and that one is good for the company. As I said early, earlier, we, we want to train our workforce. We want them to, to know what they're doing and to love what they're doing too so that our productivity is always high. If there's the next one. Okay, I'm done. That's Victoria. So for our competitive strategy in our UAV drones, um, we basically did the same strategy for both our cameras and our drones. Um, the one thing that we always did try to do, though, was make sure we had a 5% or higher special contract, just because we personally saw it help, like, our APS and ROE the most to have that contract. Like, once we had to start using that, it really helped boost that a lot. Uh, we also, as you can see on the slide, we did our warranty period by region just because like in Asia, Pacific and Latin America, if you went up any higher on those, it would really drop a lot of our numbers that we were trying to keep up, like our credit rating and stuff as well. Um, we also did our advertisement differently in our UAV drones and our cameras, just because in our drones, I felt like we just didn't, we didn't put as much money in the drones as I feel like we did in the cameras just because looking at our numbers after all of our decisions, it just wasn't the right thing for us to do at the time. So then if after that, you can go to the next slide, Jarrett. Okay, I don't know if my thing is frozen. So for compensation and training strategy, the main things we focused on for compensation is mainly like our employees for the training. Just because when people know what they're doing and feel comfortable with what they're doing, they're more prone to do it even better and get a lot more done. We also really focused on our attendance and our fringe package just because a lot of people will work harder knowing there's more of a reward in the end. And then we always tried every year to have a base wage of 5% or higher. For the production strategy, For the production strategy, we always started a wage. We started out a wage of 1%. And then in year seven, we actually shot that up to 8%. And we even did that continuing, I believe, till the end of our, the end of our, um, ending of the word, our years as our company. For our 
production strategy. This my thing is slow. Sorry, guys. So for the production strategy, we really um, try to do great compensation for our workforce and our trainings. And we did have a lot of overtime use, which was fine, just because how we did our finances and seeing where we stood from getting EPS and everything else, it really wasn't a big deal to us. And we also did invest in our plant facilities towards the end. We weren't able to build on that as much just because, again, it would mess up our numbers that we really focused on throughout a lot of this. So then on to our financial strategy. So we made sure we were loan free just because being loan free allowed us to be able to pay any debt that we may have had and it did it without affecting any of our finances. We also focused a lot on increasing our dividends each year because again, we noticed the more dividends we would pay and put out, it would help increase our numbers. Now the credit rating is something we always really focused on because we always try to get that A or higher, sometimes really an A plus in the last couple of years. And then our secured, secured equity with our shareholders, as you can see in the picture below, we made sure to have 20% debt and only 80% and 80% equity just because you always want your debt to be way lower, obviously. And then we also talked about our dividend payout for the next two years. And I think with this one, we just plan to pay out really what's not going to affect like our investment expectation too much unless it's for the good. For you, we did a $9 payout and then for your 16 and 17, just looking back at some of the decisions and seeing how that fluctuates those numbers, I believe we can honestly do 12 in year 16 and 13 in year 17. I feel like if we go any higher in year 17, it might throw everything off, which we don't want, especially knowing where we stand now. You can go on, Jerry. All right, so uh, next we're gonna talk about our competitors, uh, who to watch and our closest rivals. Uh, we decided on uh, integrated imagery and B. They actually ended up tying uh, twice in the actual presentation or uh, in the actual uh, industry rankings to be begin with. So um, first I wanna talk about integrated imagery. Their net sales, they were really good. They honestly had uh, the second or third highest net sales revenue with uh, as far as the AC camera and also the UAV drone segments or whatnot. Their marketing costs were also uh, somewhat consistent with everybody else, everybody else's. But uh, I think the one thing that really uh, knocked them out and that really killed them that I think we excelled in was the fact that we kept a really tight belt and we were very, very much about uh, expenditure management. We made sure to the best of our ability to spend, um, it, optimize our, you know, the effect of our, our our spending. So, you know, it's just diminishing returns. It's rel relative to the amount of money you spend, you know, are you going to see results into that? You're going to see results. So trying to find that sweet spot, uh, sweet spot in between, you know, spending enough money to where we hit our revenue goals, uh, where we hit uh, our EPS and our ROE and uh, just continue to grow as a company. And uh, that is uh, where, honestly, we think we excelled at them at, as, but they still were uh, very up close on us. They were right behind us, and consistently they uh, performed very, very well and uh, strong throughout uh, the years. Um, second is B. B, now they are a little bit more modest, but again, uh, essentially the same story to where, um, unlike us, what they did was is that they 
their marketing they their marketing budget was a little bit overblown um they didn't see as uh they didn't see that necessarily translate into much as revenue as they did um their marketing cost was a little bit more uh you know a little bit more modest but like you said before, uh, like I said before, um, as far as build quality and different materials and other things that they were spending money on, they ended up uh, falling behind just due to the fact that budget and expenditure wise, they didn't keep a close eye on that. And I think that's something that we really, really uh, note down to where every single year that we uh, came back to the drawing board, we didn't necessarily think that, hey, what worked in year 14 is gonna work in year 14. What worked in year 16 is not gonna work. We you know we try to stay flexible and dynamic. And so uh, we really, really tried to watch and tailor, tailor make our spending habits to each and every specific region. You know, uh, what, ex what exactly were they uh, receptive to? Like North America, extended warranties, um, as opposed to this uh, African and European uh, country, they were they tended to be more receptive toward uh, online sales. So different things like that. Um, strategies that we think to stay up on top. Now, I think to preface this, it's good to say that, uh, you know, employee level, middle management and higher management employees level is it's his job to uh, carry out and execute execute what exactly the company is going to do, what goals, middle management is to manage that and make kinks and little alterations for that. But the top management, which we are upper management, it's our job to think in the abstract. It's our job to think uh, forward into the future. What are we going to be looking at? Where are we going to be in the next five, 10 years, as opposed to middle management would say, hey, where are we going to be in the next quarter? Um, so we want to improve our uh, our performance quality. Market trends show that there's a stagnation specifically in this area. Um, you know, as far as, uh, you know, it's a little, so futures, uh, they have had a somewhat of a little modest uh, upslope, but then specifically price is rising. And since pricing is rising, we see that market trend. One thing we're gonna, we realize is that if the price is rising, customers are gonna expect more futures, they're gonna expect more performance. So we have to go back uh, and, you know, reevaluate our pri pricing strategy and different things like that. Um, and our next goal that we think we really need to do, which again, it's something that we really nailed, but we can always get better, we can always improve, is to continue our optimization of operation costs and all other costs that have to do with the business, whether or not that be administrative costs, delivery costs, uh, supplemental uh, safety training, things that make our workforce happy and uh, happy as a result, more productive. Um, and all, so. All right, um, and then uh, lessons learned that made a aspect an industry leader. Uh, again, finding the sweet spot as far as our spending with the online and retail space. Um, as you can see, we're here, we're kind of in the middle of the pack, but honestly, we found that to be, you know, the optimal, optimal amount of spending as far as uh, online search engine adverts and retail discounts. We found that was very, very effective. We found that if we went too far or too high end, you know, our EPS and our ROE and our shareholder pricing and our value would go down and we wouldn't necessarily see that yield and revenue that would make that worth it. As far as our sales promotions and uh, advertising, again, that is something that we were modest on. If we did have a weekly promo, we kept, uh, we only did it in regions that were more receptive, which uh, that tended to mostly only be North America throughout the years in our decisions. That seemed to be, that, that market specifically seemed to be more receptive to promos. And even when we did do promos, we kept it to one week. Um, so, so um, you know, just optimizing spending and effectiveness when it comes to our, our, our overall marketing endeavors. Mm. Um, lessons learned that again, you know, uh, what made us industry leader. We need to continue to trim up our labor costs year after year. We've kept labor as far as uh, keep our labor ex expenditures at a like, uh, uh, you know, a sustainable and, you know, balance between, again, we want our workers to feel satisfied with their pay and also their working conditions. So finding that uh, happy medium between that, continue developing a ma management approach, continue to uh, develop the management approach that honestly has just been the key to our success, our constant channels of communication. Um, you know, uh, I think as far as decisions wise go, I think Victoria and Mary, uh, they were willing to, you know, again, as far as decisions wise, they were willing to go back to the redrawing board and not be stagnant, be flexible and be dynamic. And so that that's definitely a plus to them. And it just shows the strength of our management. And, uh, you know, just being flexible and 
always willing to do constant improvement and uh, you know developing our strategy and altering it uh, to a new market and uh, you know continue to grow our market share and everything like that. So that's our presentation and that's what we uh, see in the future and that's uh, our annual report.